Imagine seeing the grandeur of Yellowstone Yosemite or the Grand Canyon for the first time 150 years ago. They inspired our young nation to set aside these places for the enjoyment of future generations. It began with Yellowstone, created by Congress in 1872 as a pleasuring ground for the benefit and enjoyment of the people, and they inspire us still today. As President Obama reflected, I have very fond memories as a kid of traveling to Yellowstone. I believe strongly that our national parks are one of America's most precious treasures and that we should do all we can to ensure that they are properly maintained and available for all Americans to enjoy. 44 years after our first national park was established, Congress created the National Park Service. Today, this agency protects nearly 400 park units and welcomes nearly 300 million visits annually. Our parks are icons, but our challenge today is to sustain this connection in a very different world, where leisure time and activities are changing drastically. We can thank President Theodore Roosevelt for greatly expanding the national parks. By 1916, 14 national parks have been created, with many providing overnight accommodations and services. Stephen Mather, the National Park Service's first director added numerous visitor facilities to a growing system, striving for grand, enduring structures compatible with the glory of the parks themselves. His reasoning was clear. Scenery is a hollow enjoyment to the tourist who sets out in the morning after an indigestible breakfast and a fitful night's sleep on an impossible bed. These new parks were partnerships from the start Railroad companies built many of the new lodges to attract visitors and serve cross-country travelers. And those who came loved what they saw and helped spur the National Park's popularity. Amid inspirational natural beauty, Americans gain physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. They also find learning adventures in history, science, and the arts and parks unite us across regional, age, and cultural divides. National parks are anchors for communities across the nation, creating jobs and improving quality of life. In 2007, visitors spent nearly $12 billion in and around national parks. But many Americans today are not sharing in these experiences. In the last 20 years, our nation's population has grown by 25%, and yet the number of visitors to parks has declined. Younger Americans are increasingly tied to their TVs, computer screens, and mobile devices. They are plugged in, but tuned out to the world outdoors. Half of these young Americans are overweight and face chronic diseases that threaten shortened lives. All of us involved with parks need to work together to bond the next generation of citizens to the great outdoors. We need to act now because tomorrow's Americans won't protect what they don't understand and value. The centennial of the National Park Service in 2016 is near and it provides us with the opportunity to reaffirm the importance of our national parks. Our national parks have faced budget challenges for many years and will for years to come. Deferred maintenance, restoration of worn out historic structures, and outreach are all real needs. To ensure that tomorrow's Americans are connected to our parks, we need to tell them about our national parks in new ways, making the parks easier to discover and more attractive to visit. The centennial prompted filmmaker Ken Burns to produce a 12-hour, six-part PBS series the National Parks, America's Best Idea. If Burns and others can again capture the enthusiasm of the nation, as Ansel Adams and others did for prior generations, the hope that every American will benefit from parks could become a reality, and the dream that every child will visit a park before the age of 12 could come true. It's time for new strategies and expanded partnerships and National Park Concessioners are excellent candidates for these tasks. 
Congressman Mo Udall, another National Park visionary, addressed the role of concessioners decades ago, saying, the parks are not, unless they are otherwise so designated, wilderness areas. They are meant to be seen, enjoyed, and experienced by people. To do that, we have to provide them with certain services, places to stay, places to eat, tours, interpretive facilities, and the like. We concessioners have been attracting and taking care of park visitors for over 100 years. Like the National Park Service, we are committed to long-term protection of park resources and sustainability. Our 25,000 employees serve more than 100 million visitors to the National Park System each year. We operate rustic cabins, campgrounds, and legendary lodges. We provide transportation on classic red buses and new technology trams. We offer pack trips into the backcountry, houseboats, food, raft trips, and retail shops. We have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in park facilities and embrace quality service and environmental best practices. It's easy to see why. I'm a concessioner. I treasure my ability to protect the historic structures in Glacier National Park for today and future generations to come. I am a concessioner. I want to make every visit to my parks memorable and to find new resources to meet park needs for the next century. I'm a concessioner. I want our nation's youth to know the great outdoors and how it shaped our nation's character and spirit. I'm a concessionaire, and I'm proud to welcome visitors from other countries and share with them the real America. We are concessioners, some 25,000 proud partners of the National Park Service. For National Park concessioners and others like us who know the power of parks, it's time to roll up our sleeves, get to work, and make the connection between parks and the American people as enduring as the great parks themselves.